Hello everybody! What do you think of my new hat? I'll explain why I'm wearing it. Well, I'll try to. Uh, but anyway, I do have some potentially terrible news, despite the comedy hat, uh, regarding the photography bug. Now, there's a good chance if you tuned into this video that you have the photography bug, and that's not really been a problem up until now, because uh, well, it's always been presumed to be this positive thing, like, oh, I've got the photography bug, I just can't stop taking photos, I can't stop exploring and just enjoying time with my camera. That's generally considered a positive thing, but new research, new drunken research, undertaken by me has found that there is a second negative strain of the photography bug and it's a strain that I'm concerned that I've I've caught and uh, the main symptom of this strain is uh, is relatively straightforward basically it's um well, it's taking photos not for the right reasons it's taking photos for for things like the dopamine hit of social media likes and I have reason to believe that I've started to to do that a little bit and I shall use my favorite and my least favourite app at the same time to demonstrate. It's called Instagram, some of you may have heard of it, and it's my favourite app because I love to look at photos, other people's photos. It's my least favourite app because, uh, well, recently it's just been showing me all the same photos, and I don't mean exactly the same photos, I mean different photos that look exactly the same as all the other photos that I'm being shown. I'll demonstrate. So, in the past, I don't know, two, three months, my Explore tab on Instagram has been made up of one thing, which is girls in leggings on mountains. That's pretty much the only photo, or the only photo type, I see in my Explore tab. Girls, leggings, mountains. That's it. And I mean, I haven't really helped this. I mean, I've posted photos of Emily in leggings on my, uh, my Instagram feed before. And in fact, I think that is one of the most popular posts I've ever, um, I've ever uploaded, which sort of goes to goes to show that what I'm talking about is, is a real thing. But yeah, basically what I found is that um, recently I've, I've been going to quite extreme lengths to ensure that I can take photos of, of leggings, even when Emily's like at work. So I've started wearing leggings and uh, what that means really is that I can, I can practice my poses and I can just take photos of myself in leggings anytime the, the opportunity arises which makes me feel much better because it, it means I might get more likes. Uh, now these photos of girls on mountains in leggings, I presume, are taken by a whole array of photographers and some of those photographers are taking those photos purely because they like to take photos like that. And others, I think, have been inspired by the success of other photos. And by success, I mean, uh, well, Instagram likes. Uh, and it's not just leggings, sadly. Um, there are lots of other examples, I think, of the bad strain of... Uh, the photography bug spreading, and I shall use one of my favourite Instagram accounts called Insta Repeat to demonstrate. Uh, now, if you've not seen Insta Repeat before, basically it's an Instagram account that compiles lots and lots of different photos that all look exactly the same, so that you can see that there are lots of the same photos all in one post, and uh, will hopefully avoid taking photos that look anything like what everyone else is taking photos of. And what it demonstrates is that there are lots of people following a few trends very, very closely. And they include, well, you can probably guess. And I mean, nothing says natural quite like a designer outfit on a mountaintop. I mean, yes, there could be an avalanche. Yes, there could be a freak storm. Yes, there could be a major injury requiring helicopter rescue. But what's most important when you're on a mountain, I think, is looking like you're in Milan. And I mean, I'm aware that nobody in Milan would, would wear this, but it's the closest thing that I had to the... Anyway. Fairy lights. Uh, you see lots of these in photos, typically in camper vans, I find, camper vans in cars. And these are great for disguising the fact that uh, when you're in a camper van, you're having to go to the toilet in the woods and you're essentially sleeping in a car. What fairy lights do is look pretty and uh, make people forget about the inconveniences of, of living on four wheels. Um, drone in a forest. I mean, I'm partial to this one, to be honest. I do quite like taking photos from a drone in a forest. But this is a prime example. Get rid of these. This is a prime example of um, the kind of photo that I take. And when the drone's up in the air and I'm taking the photo, I'm thinking to myself, am I taking this photo because I like this kind of photo or because other people will like this photo? And by like, I mean Instagram like, not, not proper like. Um, dangling feet. Is it me or would every single photo be better 
without feet. I mean, again, I've taken photos of feet before and I get the implications of freedom, the sense of adventure, the, uh, the element of humanity that you get when you add some feet into a photo. But I do think that the world would be a better place if people stopped dangling their feet out of helicopters and taking photos of it. Just my opinion. But anyway, Instagram, I think, has played a huge part in this increasing uh, photographical groupthink that I think is taking place across the world, where people from all different places, in different places, find themselves taking the same photos as other people. And it's a mindset that I'm finding that I'm having to constantly, and more actively as time goes on, fight. And it's for this reason that I think Instagram testing hiding likes, which they're doing in a handful of countries at the moment, is a brilliant thing. So you might not have heard, but Instagram basically is, uh, yeah, not showing likes as a test in some countries. And they're saying that they're doing this to uh, take away the pressure from gathering likes because they, they worry that young people are being too concerned with how many likes they're getting and, and that's having an influence on, on the things that they're posting. I'm skeptical of their reasoning, to be honest. I mean, if it turns out that there's a huge drop in engagement as a result of this test, I don't think they'll stick with it, not for one minute. But I really like that they're at least testing it because I think for too long now, on places like Instagram, uh, people have been viewing photos at the exact same time that they view the popularity of that photo, which I think completely changes your experience of the photo. And I think if you get rid of the popularity and people start to judge a photo individually and on its own merits, I think the world will be a better place and I think photography will be in a much, much better place as well. And the other thing that I'd say about Instagram likes is this. I think sometimes people think about Instagram likes as this huge grand gesture of um, people showing their appreciation for an incredible piece of work. I think in reality what it is, is people have half a second or a second to look at a tiny version of your photo on their phone. And if there's something about that photo that they find attractive, then they'll hit twice on their screen to show a kind of token level of appreciation. And if I think about just my use with Instagram, I was on Instagram just before I started recording this video, so about, I don't know, 10 minutes ago, and I liked a few photos, I know I liked a few photos, I couldn't tell you what photos I liked. I've forgotten all about them. I don't remember any of the photos that I liked. So photos with a lot of likes on Instagram are rewarded because they satisfy some sort of very shallow, uh, attention grubby type test that in no way resembles how we view photos or imagery in any other part of our lives. And uh, so if you've got Instagram photos that you think are brilliant but don't perform brilliantly, there's a good chance that those photos are brilliant. It's just the parameters that Instagram operates within are not conducive to other people appreciating that photo as much as they would on like a, a gallery wall, for example, or some other kind of completely different setting other than a tiny phone screen. So don't worry about it. And the only known cure I found to this bad strain of the photography bug and I discovered this while I was drunk as well, is, uh, is to not consider other people's opinions at all when you're taking photos and just think about the kind of photos that you want to take. You should enjoy a photo as much if you know that for eternity it's going to be locked in a safe and seen by nobody as if you were going to upload it on, uh, on your Instagram and other social platforms. You should get as much joy from nobody seeing it as you do from lots of other people seeing it and reacting to it. And if that's not the case, it may just be that you're taking photos for other people as opposed to for yourself first. And I find that taking photos for yourself leads to uh, much better things than Instagram likes. In my case, it can lead to um, book sales or print sales or jobs. And uh, that is, is more fulfilling than, um, than some likes on Instagram. Literally, it, it pays for my food. So it, it's very filling compared to Instagram likes. I mean, all the videos that I've ever done, I've, I've wondered at the end of my spiel um, whether they've made sense or not. Not quite to the extent with this one. I, I'm, I'm pretty sure that most of you are scratching your heads at this minute. And if you're not, it's, um, well, miracle. Uh, also, before I let you go, uh, a number of you have been asking me about workshops, whether I'm gonna be running workshops, when they'll be, where they'll be, all that kind of stuff. And uh, over the coming months and years, I guess, I'll do a number of announcements about workshops, starting today with, um, with an announcement that me and Brendan will be co-leading a workshop in Namibia 
in October of next year. And uh, there'll be lots of safari type stuff, lots of dunes. I mean, I'm sure you've seen lots of photos of Namibia. It's gonna be awesome. And to be honest, I, I may look something like this when that rolls around, but uh, that'll be fun. So if you're interested, there's a link in the description over to Brendan's site where he, uh, he lists everything that we'll be getting up to. So that'd be fun. And um, minus the leggings, actually. I, I probably won't wear leggings in Namibia. Plus trousers, I won't just take the leggings off and, and be done with it. I'll be wearing normal clothes. Anyway, thank you for watching. I'm gonna go and get changed, I think. And turn this light off, because I'm, I'm squinting. See you next time. <laughs>